Now we're going to talk about rectangles. And the definition of a rectangle is that it's a parallelogram. It is a parallelogram that has four right angles. Here are the four right angles. There's a right angle in each one of the corners. Notice that it says it's a parallelogram. So that means if a rectangle is a parallelogram, it will inherit all of the properties of a parallelogram. And we already know all of the properties of the parallelogram. In addition to the properties you already know for parallelograms, a rectangle's diagonals are congruent. That means that diagonal AC this diagonal here is congruent to DB. So if DB measures 10, AC measures 10. And also, we also have that the diagonals bisect each other, okay? That property still remains because it's a parallelogram. So if DB measures 10, can you tell me what A Let's call this point here in the center, this intersecting point, let's call that E. Can you tell me what AE measures? AE will measure 5. How do I know that? Because if DB is 10, then AC is also 10 because this is a rectangle. If AC is 10, and I know that the diagonals bisect each other, that means that this piece here has to be congruent to that piece here. This piece is congruent to this piece, and also the whole diagonal is congruent to this whole diagonal. So if DB is 10, AC is 10, and half of AC, which is AE, is going to be 5. Okay? Let's see an example. Here I have an example. It says, use diagonals of a rectangle. And it tells you in letter A, your nail, that you nail four pieces of wood together to build a four-sided frame, as shown in the diagram. What is the shape of the frame? Here's the frame. You nailed four corners together. And these are the measurements. This side measures four feet. This side measures four feet. This side measures 6, this side measures 6. So far with this diagram, the only conclusion I can reach is that opposite sides, opposite sides are congruent. That's all I can say. I can't assume anything else. Therefore, I cannot say this is a rectangle because in order to say this is a rectangle, I would have to have evidence that it has four right angles as the definition of rectangles says. I can't say it's a rhombus. Definitely not a rhombus because the definition of a rhombus is all sides are congruent and not, and in this case, all the sides are not congruent. I can say is a parallelogram because opposite sides are congruent. So all I can say for letter A is that this is a parallelogram. Okay? What kind of a parallelogram? Not enough information for me to state that. Okay? Letter B says the diagonals measure 7 feet and 4 inches and 7 feet and 2 inches. That means that this diagonal measures 7 4 inches, this one 7, 2 inches, or the other way around, whichever. Is this frame a rectangle? It's asking you, is it a rectangle? Well, we know that for rectangles, we know that for rectangles, the diagonals are congruent. That means they measure the same thing. And in this example, one diagonal measures one thing and the other one measures differently. Therefore, letter B, no, it's not a rectangle. Okay, let's see another example. In this rectangle, K, L, M, N, K, O is two feet. Let's label that. K, O is this distance and that equals two feet. Find NL. They want me to find the length 
of this diagonal. Okay, so since this is a rectangle, I know that the diagonals are congruent. That means that KM, segment KM is congruent to segment NL. They are congruent. That means they measure the same thing. Okay? Do I know how much KM measures? Well, KM is going to measure 4 feet. How do I know that? Because if half of KM measures 2 feet, and I know the diagonals bisect each other, and this measures 2, then the whole thing must measure 4. So if KM is 4, then I can say NL is equal to 4 feet. Because NL, which is the other diagonal, has to be congruent to KM. Okay, let's see another example. For this example, I have rectangle ABCD. AB is 6. Let's label it. This is 6. AD is 8. This is 8. And AC equals 10. And that means this whole diagonal is 10. The whole thing is 10. 10. Okay. Find CD. CD is the side of the rectangle, and since this is a parallelogram, I know opposite sides are congruent. So CD is also 6. For 25, BC. BC is this side down here. Since this is a parallelogram, I know opposite sides are congruent, so BC has to be 8. For BD, BD is the diagonal going from here all the way across to here. This is a rectangle. I know that the diagonals of a rectangle are congruent. So if they are, and I know that this one measures 10, AC measures 10, then BD has to also measure 10. AE. AE is half of the diagonal. This piece here, if the whole thing measures 10, then half of that is 5. And for BE, BE, here it is, BE, that's half of the other diagonal, and since they both measure 10, half of this diagonal is going to be 5. Next example. Find the error. In this quadrilateral, PQRS, notice it says quadrilateral. It's not saying it's a parallelogram. It doesn't say it's a rectangle, a rhombus, anything at all. In this quadrilateral, PQRS, PR is congruent to QS. So that means that this diagonal is congruent to this diagonal. The diagonals are congruent. Lola thinks that the quadrilateral is a square. And Xavier thinks that it is a rhombus. Is either of them correct? And explain your reasoning. Okay. Lola thinks this is a square. Let's prove her wrong. What is the definition of a square? The definition of a square is, well, we haven't seen squares yet. We'll see that in our next video. Okay. But Xavier thinks it's a rhombus. Now, the definition of a rhombus is that all sides are congruent. All sides are congruent. That's the definition of a rhombus. And since they're not giving us any information on the sides, they are giving us information on the diagonal. So what do I know about the diagonals in a rhombus? The diagonals in a rhombus. The diagonals are perpendicular. And I also know that they bisect each other. That's all I know about the diagonals in a rhombus. And they're telling me that these diagonals are congruent. So that doesn't help me to say this is a rhombus or not. For squares, let me tell you what the square is. The squares, for squares, the definition is it has four right angles. 
and all sides are congruent. The diagonals in a square are perpendicular. They are, they bisect each other. And also the diagonals in a square are congruent. Okay? The diagonals in a square are congruent. So which of them are correct or incorrect? Lola thinks it's a square. Well, Lola might be right. Xavier is definitely wrong. And Lola thinks it's a square because the diagonals are congruent. But what? who else can this be? What other figure can this be that has congruent diagonals? Well, this can also be a rectangle. Okay? It can be a rectangle. It can also be a square because a square has congruent diagonals. Let's see our next example. This is the last example for rectangles. Here I'm going to use a little bit of algebra. Um, this 2x here, this represents this diagonal. And x plus 5 represents, let me change to red, x plus 5 represents this diagonal. Okay. Find the value of x. Well, since this is a rectangle, I know the diagonals have the same measure. So if this diagonal measures 2x and this one measures x plus 5, that means that I can state that this diagonal has to be equal to the other diagonal. And there you've written an equation and now you solve for x. To solve for x, you subtract x from each side. You get x is equal to 5. It only asks you to find x, but I want you to find how much sq is. sq measures x plus 5. And I found what x is. I found x is 5. So 5 plus 5, that means sq measures 10. And let's check pr. I know it has to be 10 because the diagonals are congruent. So pr is equal to 2x. I know what at x is, which is 5. So pr equals 10. And it checks out both are 10. Okay, and this is our last, exam our last example. If you need to go back and review and check these problems again, go ahead, hit pause, rewind, watch it five times, whatever it takes. I hope you've uh, been able to clarify any doubts that you might have had with this material in class, and I'll see you in the next video, which is squares.